We don't practice because someone makes us practice. We don't practice for fame or glory. We don't practice to impress anyone and make us feel better about ourselves. We certainly don't practice for money. We practice because we yearn to connect. Connect to the ancestors that built this. Connect to the modern geniuses that inspire us. Connect to our city and our scene and the listeners in the back of the room. But mostly we want to connect to that spark that lives deep within all of us. That spark that wants to be fire. We practice every day to clear a path for that spark. Let's practice together. Welcome to the Daily Guided Practice Session. Let's start with our chromatic scale, 88 beats per minute. Let's get to work. What's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to today's Guided Practice Session. My name is Adam Manis. And uh, what's up, Bruce from Austin? What's up, Rich from Las Vegas? What's up, Alessandro from Venice? It's not a bad looking city, Venice. What's up, Andrew from Halifax, Halifax, Nova Scotia? What's up, my man Tortog? What's going on? Colleen, hello. Some double dippers already up in here. So get ready to practice today. Get to your instrument. Make sure you can hear yourself. Make sure you can hear me. Can you hear me? Oh, we're getting fancy around here. Uh, we are practicing something that is so simple and a concept that's so uh, easy to understand and like all great things just has endless complexity that we can add to it and make super, super interesting. It's a little warm up that Jeffrey Keyser teaches in his amazing open studio course, Keys to Jazz Piano. And ever since I saw this lesson that Jeffrey explains this warm up, I mean, I do this every week, at least three or four times in my practice routine, I'll do this warm up. It's such a great brain teaser, a way to sort of like wake up our musical brains and minds. It's so, so incredible. And we'll go over it today. We'll just work on it a little bit today. It's something you can do all the time. And in that spirit, you know, we like to give you an offer on a deeper dive. You can save 50% off of Jeffrey Keezer's Keys to Jazz Piano today only. There it is. Thank you, Ian right there in the chat and in the description. You're gonna wanna get this course. I'm not being hyperbolic when I say that I've learned at least like 15 to 20 amazing practice concepts. He's, he has, Jeffrey Keezer has one of the most uh, detailed musical minds of his generation and he's such an incredible musician and, and a great, great guy too, great teacher. Uh, super fun to just be, be spending that time with him. Go check it out, 50% off. You can just click that link and it takes that 50% right off the price. But we're practicing this really special warm up that Keys does so well and it's just such a great, it just gives, it just makes me in a great vibe at the instrument. I think you're gonna really like it if you don't know it already. It's just super cool. So we'll just give it another couple minutes as the room fills up. You know how we do it. What's up, Nariko? Double dipping. What's up, Jeremy from Penn Valley, Northern California? What's up, Cobb from Palm Coast, Florida? What's up, Yao Ming? Hi again. Double dipping. Dan Mullaney. When I say double dipping, we have a daily guided practice session at 1 p.m. Eastern. And so a lot of those folks uh, from Open Studio then just join me over here, which is great. We're practicing all day together. What's up, Kyle from Minnesota? Dave from Somerset in the UK. What's up, Tron Tron <laughs> from Seattle? Tron Tron. That's a great name. Tron Tron, especially with my Midwestern accent. What's up, Dijon from, uh, I believe, from Serbia? If I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that. Excuse me if I am. Cool, cool. Just another minute or so as we reach five past the hour of a Tuesday. What's up, Dave? What's good? I'll tell you what's good. This little chord warm up that we're going to do. Also, check out my new digs here where you can see what I'm playing. I still have an uh, option for an overhead if we want, but this new uh, little chordy thing we've got going on with Open Studio is pretty darn inspiring. If you want to see some chords, here you go. 
Isn't that great? Oh, Lee from Red Lodge. Wish I was in the Red Lodge. What's up, Travis from Dallas? What's up, Alex? Yo, what up, Ryan? Good to see you, man. Omar from Austria. Blinking Frog is double dipping. Who are you, Blinking Frog? What's up, Kyle? Yeah, man. So tonight here on this very YouTube channel, Peter Martin and I are going to be listening to my very favorite Oscar Peterson record, We Take Requests. We get requests? We get requests, <laughs> which is a stunningly amazing album of standards. What's up, Toby from Salt Lake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Well, it is five after. So shall we get practicing? Let's do it. Again, what we're working on today, you can get in Keys to Jazz Piano. Uh, it's one of the most useful collection of lessons you'll ever come across for jazz piano. I really am uh, a fan of that course. And Jeffrey Keezer is one of the great pianists of his generation. So go check that out. You can save 50% today just by clicking the link there in the chat or the description. So yeah, what's up, John from NYC? Ron? Ah, oh, it's your first time here. Welcome, Ron. Get ready to work because we're going to be working on a super useful warm up. Okay, let's get into it. So, what is this warm up? Well, like I said, like all good things, it starts nice and easy. It starts very simple. It starts like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Then we start throwing some more stuff on top of it. And before you know it, you have an amazing meal. Okay, that was a bad food analogy. But what is the basic premise of it? The basic version we can do is to start with two notes. We want to be about a ninth apart, at least a ninth apart. We can be more than that, but if we start at a ninth apart, let, let's start here at C and D, right? So these outside notes are the parameters in which we'll do our chord warm up. We're going to move these outside notes. To start, we'll do it as simply as possible, just uh, in contrary motion, chromatically. And just so if uh, this D goes up to E flat, the B goes down to, or the C goes down to B, each one moving chromatically. And then if, if we get into a range where we have to switch the octave, that's okay. We don't have to stick with this. We can keep going forever, just keeping the octave, like switching back and forth, keeping it as close as we want or not. So the, the real trick here is, is we fill in between these two notes the chord of our choice, whatever that is. This is a great way to, on the fly, be able to harmonize a bass note and a melody note. It, this comes in so, so handy when we want to do things like harmonize standards. No matter what bass note or melody note we have, we get used to what are my chord options here? What are my options with a C and a D? So, for instance, uh, you could do a C major 9. Right? Just fill in everything. Or what about a 6 9? You could do a C minor 11. You could do a C minor 6 9. You could do a C dominant 13. Right? You could do a C diminished 9. All of these are options with these two notes. Isn't that diabolical? It's so like so we start very basic. Maybe we just start with minor 7, C minor 9, right? Now our next two notes are B and E flat or B and D sharp. So we could do major seven, right? Just simple, we can do as simple of a voicing as we want. We could do dominant seven. What else could we do? We could do six, nine, right? We could do dominant nine, dominant 13, probably some other options. Sharp 11 we could do. So if we keep going and move these outside notes again, one down chromatically, one up, now we have B flat and E. Well, here my first thought is maybe like a Lydian, like a B flat major nine, sharp 11. You could do a dominant. You could do a B flat diminished, right? You could do a B flat half diminished. All these options. It does. There's no wrong answer here, right? We're just using whatever happens, uh, whatever comes to mind quickest. So our next is A and F. For me, the first thing that comes to mind is like an A uh, sharp nine flat 13. Then we have A flat and G flat. We could do a A flat sus 11. Then we have G and G. How about a nice G seven sharp 11 flat nine? You know, or whatever you want. Again, you could do whatever you want, whatever works between these two notes. We have F sharp and G sharp. 
a little minor nine chord. Now we're getting pretty spread out. F and A, major, uh, major 13 chord. So now we have uh, E and B flat. This is getting pretty spread here, so maybe I'll take the E up an octave. See, we can already, we'll do an e, E7 sharp 11. See what I'm saying here? Isn't this awesome? Now E flat and B, oh, this is gonna be kind of tough. So what if we did a little augmented? All right, a little sharp five, a little seven sharp five. It's not a great sounding chord, but here we go. So even making like not great choices is informative, right? We're learning how to do this. So uh, next is D and C, something like that maybe. And then D flats, a little D flat seven, D flat dominant nine. And then we're back to our C and D. We could do whatever we want. So that's just the very basic version where we take, we just pick randomly, you know, at least a ninth apart. You could do, if you change the interval to start, everything changes, right? All of a sudden you have all new options. And then you can just change where, like even if you did a ninth apart, but you started on D flat and E flat, then everything changes, right? Then you have all of this, uh, all of these options. It's the greatest warm up ever because you're really forced into discovering different voicings, right? It really kind of makes you understand the relationship between our brute and our our melody note. And then that's not even considering like, what if we, you know, what if the root is the fifth of the chord? Like an F major sixth over C, or what if it's like a E major, you know what I mean? There's so many options here. I'll turn my camera back on. There's so many options here that we, uh, we have, so much to learn from this, and it's just so simple. So let's try it. I'm gonna start by just playing the outside note. So I'm gonna guide you, and you change when I change. Okay, we'll start with the one, the example I just did, when I kind of went through the, all the options. So we'll start very slowly, and then we'll change intervals, we'll change uh, where we are in the range of the piano. And I want you to, uh, to start picking up the pace a little bit. Like I said, not all of them have to be winner, winner, chicken dinner. Some of them can be just kind of meh. That's good, that's learning. You're learning what you have and what you don't. So let's give it a shot. Follow me, pick your chord inside of these two notes, right? C and D, pick your chord and find the best sounding voicing you can. Next two, B and D sharp. E flat. Find your chord here between the, the root B flat and the melody note E natural. Next. A and F. How about A flat and G flat? What do you got? Again, we're finding the chord between these two, whatever it is, there's no wrong answer. G and G. G flat and A flat. F and A. It's pretty self-explanatory here. E and B flat, and let's take that E back up to get it kind of close. So E up here, B flat there. E flat and B, what do you got? That's a tough one. D and C, could be a number of things. Again, no wrong answers. D flat and D flat. And then how about something different on the last one, which was the first one? C and D, we're now an octave apart, right? Over an octave apart, two octaves apart. Isn't that great? So just that little exercise there can be a extremely helpful game changer as far as how fast you are at coming up with solid sounding voicings between those two things. If you wanna go uh, on a deeper dive on this, we're offering 50% off of Jeffrey Keyser's amazing Keys to Jazz Piano. That's where this exercise originates from. 
let Keezer explain it to you. It's even more in depth and more amazing. And then there's like literally dozens of other little gems of practice techniques. Let's keep this going a few a few more times on this because it's so incredible. Let's just take our first note here, C, and let's go down one half step. So there's other things you can do now, right? We don't we we can go in in half steps. We can also change what we do with each one of these notes. So instead of going in half steps with our left hand, we could go in the whole tone scale while our right hand still goes in half steps, right? Doesn't matter how many notes you play in between. It doesn't matter how thick the chord is. It could be that, you know, and then it could be this. So that's what we'll do. We'll start here at B and D, right? You can fill in any quality chord you want. There is no wrong answer. It's just kind of how fast can you get there? And how good does it sound, right? How interesting can you make it? Maybe it's half diminished, maybe it's minor seven, right? Then we're gonna go down in whole steps with our left hand and up in half steps with our right hand. So A and E flat. So watch me do this. And next is G and E, and then F and F and then E flat and G flat, oh, it's pretty. And then D flat and G, Ooh, I barely reach. All right, I'm gonna go up for B and A flat, whatever that is, and then A and A, ah, uh, and then G and B flat, come on now, and then F and B, see what I'm saying? Isn't that fun? We can just keep going. So let's, let's do this, we'll start on B and D. I will guide you through this and I'll try to give you a little less time than last time so it kind of forces you into picking it. We'll go up with our right hand in half steps and we'll go down in our left hand in whole steps. See what I'm saying? But it starts with just a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and then it becomes something bigger. Let's try it. B and D, what do you got? Next, A and E flat, you got it. We're going up in half steps and down in whole steps. G and E. Pretty easy one. F and F, another easy one. Lots of options. Don't forget about augmented chords and diminished chords. What about E flat and G flat? Now we'll do D flat and G, and let's take that low note up an octave so that we don't get too spread out. What's your chord here between D flat and G? B and G sharp. A and A. G and B flat, you got it, you got it. F and B, this is very spread. Let's go up here to E flat and C. D flats, you got it. See how once you do this a little bit, it becomes a little bit more intuitive of what your options are. And then we're back to the top, B and D, but now we're further spread out. Cool, 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 okay. That's fun. So the fun part is, is like, okay, how can I switch it up for the next time? So we'll start here, let's start with the, the same starting point, B and D. It's a great starting point, uh, a 10th, right? It's just really nice, you can fit in a few different options here. We'll start in B, and this time let's go up in whole steps, right? So we'll do the whole tone scale with our right hand going up. And let's go in the circle of fourths in our left hand. So from here, and that, so you can either go up a fourth or down a fifth, right? So B and D becomes E and E, becomes A and F sharp. You feel me? Isn't that great? becomes this it's just endless like so we're really randomizing what our bass note is and what our our melody note is if you're just joining us this is an exercise that jeffrey keezer developed where you just have a bass note and a melody note and you fill in whatever chord you can think of in between and you can set these different patterns to kind of fool yourself and it's just an amazing way to kind of warm up our brains our musical muscles um, and so let's choose a pattern here. We'll start on B and D. We're going up in our right hand in whole steps and we're going around the circle of fourths in our left hand. You ready? B and D, you got it. Let's go down for E and E. What do you got? 
A and F sharp. D and G sharp, you got it. G and B flat, fill in the chord, whatever you want. C and C. I'm gonna take my right hand down here for F and D. B flat and E. E flat and G flat. It's so cool, isn't it? A flat and A flat. D flat and B flat. This is a nice one. F sharp and C. Beautiful. You got it. Okay, we're going up in whole steps with our right hand and in the circle of fourths with our left hand. And we're back at D and B. Okay. Oh my gosh. There's so much we can do here. So what if we went, what if we went trying to think of let's go let's let's return to uh, half steps in our left hand let's start at C and C we'll start you might even just do that or maybe you'll do diminished Re again your choice whatever you want to do C and C and let's go down chromatically in our left hand and let's go up in the circle of fourths in our right so that's either up a fourth or down a fifth, either one. It's going to be a little bit of a, it's going to be tough. Let's try it. Let's try it. I'm going to try to give you less time too. It's important to try to challenge yourself with this. Let's do it. I'll give you the notes and move with me here. Whatever you want, whatever chord that fits between these two notes, whatever comes to you, try to find the best sounding voicing. It doesn't have to be an interesting progression. It's literally just an exercise of here are two notes, go. Right, that's the thought of it. It's like C and C. What do you got? Like, what what comes to mind? What can you make happen here? It's a really great way to wake up. Let's try it. C and C, and then we're going up in the circle of fourths in our right hand, down chromatically in our left. Here we go. C and C, B and F, B flats, A and E flat. It happens fast now. It happens fast now. A flats. G and B flat. Are you noticing a pattern here? G flats. But this is good. This is a great way to practice this. F and B. E's. Find the best voicings. You're probably noticing some patterns here already. E flat and A. Let's go up here. Try that E flat and A. It's a big one. D and D. D flat and G. Check it out. We'll go up for the D flat. That's a good one. And then finally, C and C. We're back. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, let's do one more. Again, uh, Ian, go ahead and throw that link in the chat for the folks if they want to check out Keezer's course because he goes on an even deeper dive and he is smarter and <laughs> better at this than me. This is his exercise. Again, the point of this exercise is not to make great sounding chord progressions or anything else. It's really just, can we wake up? Can we take very little information, literally two notes, and what can we do? So you can do whatever you want with these two notes. Uh, okay, let's do one more and we'll feel pretty warm. You ready? Uh, by the way, if you're liking this too, why don't you go ahead and hit the like button. Let me know that you like these things. Let me know if you like my new setup. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, help us out here and uh, let us know what content is that you are digging around here at Open Studio. Let's do one more. Let's do, let's start a little further apart. We'll start a major tenth apart, C and E, yeah. And let's go down a C major scale. So 
just all the key of C, right? That's the thing with this exercise too. Either of these movements, we can pick whatever movement we want. We can go down a major scale. Let's go then up chromatically with our right hand. So our left hand goes down a C major scale over and over, however many times we need to. And our left hand goes, our right hand goes up chromatically, giving us all these different random options. Let's try it. C and E, what do you got? There's some obvious choices here. B and F. Again, left hand is going down a, chrom a C major scale, right hand is going up chromatically. A and F sharp. Jeez. F and A flat. Check this one out. E and A. Oh, what do you got? We'll go up on the D. D and B flat. Going up chromatically with our right hand. Down that major scale. B, or sorry, C in the left hand. B in the right. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, B in the left, C in the right. What do you got? There's some good options. Hint, hint. Let's take our right hand down as we go up. A and D flat or C sharp. Again, we're going down the, the C major scale on the left and up in the right, and we're filling in the chord, whatever chord we want, whatever chord we hear first and can make sound good. D and G. G and D. This will be good. F and E flat. E's. You got it. You got it. D and F. Fill in the chord. Whatever works. Maybe that sounds good to me. Or maybe that. Oh, C and F sharp. This is a good one. B and G, you got it. Whatever strikes you. A and G sharp. I'm going to pick up the pace here. G and A, you got it. We'll go fast. F and B flat, we'll go up for that F. You got it. E and B. D and C, fill in those chords. C and D flat. We're almost there. B and D. I wonder if it will make it around actually. A and E flat. We're just going to keep picking up the pace here in this last one. Fill in the chords, whatever you got. G and E, Fs. E and F sharp, whatever chord is appropriate. G and A flat. Sorry, D and G, my bad. That's a big spread though. It's right up here, C and A flat. I know what I would do here. B and A. Oh, this will be good. A and B flat. G and B, you got it. Ooh, that's nice. Go down here in our right hand. One more. One more here. Here we go. C and E flat. What chord are you doing here? For me? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do double. I'm going to do octaves. Check that out. What kind of jazz piano to mine? That's a beautiful chord, actually. That's it. That's the exercise. But you can see just we spent 25 minutes going through various ways to play something that's that simple. You can make it as complicated as you want. And in fact, I encourage you to make your brain hurt with this a little bit. That's what it's for. It's to wake us up and to get us to be able to think light on our feet when we need to. As pianists, it's really crucial that we're able to harmonize any melody with any bass note, usually in the in the structure of you know, an actual chord change. But if you have, you know, like a, a G, what if you're improvising, right? And you have like an F sharp seven and you want to put that flat nine on it. 
Isn't it great to know some voicings that sound great on it? So that's the way it is. Thank you very much, folks. This was so much fun. We'll leave this up so you can check it out whenever you want. Again, highly, highly encourage you to check out the Keys to Jazz Piano course just for today only for our YouTube folks. It's 50% off, which is a steal because it is really one of the most uh, well thought out collections of practice ideas for jazz piano that you could ever imagine, especially if you're like an intermediate player wanting to really uh, grow. Man, it's so good for you. I'm telling you, everything from hand independence to things like this, these little exercises to playing out um, to finding the pretty notes. Jeffrey Keezer is uh, simply one of the uh, greats of his generation, and we're so happy here at Open Studio that he's part of our family. So go check that out. Ian's going to put that link there in the description and in the chat. And uh, yeah, thanks, everybody. Super, super useful. Yes, Rich, very powerful. Thanks, Colleen. Thanks, Noriko. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, it's one of the least mechanical, quote unquote, drills that you can have. If you like this exercise, again, please hit the like button so we know what you like. And if you're not subscribed to the Open Studio YouTube channel, give us a subscribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's one of those things, too. I do it so often, uh, Rich and Steven, that it's like you never really get used to it. It's not like you're just like, oh, and now I have all these voicing. I mean, you do kind of, you just get faster at it, which is what the point of it is, right? So whenever I'm now in we real world situations where, you know, I have my hands in places and I want to start improvising the chords between two notes, it like comes so much more naturally than it ever has because of work on, on this specific drill. So yeah, it's so cool. It's, it really is. And you'll get faster with time. So check it out. Cool, everybody. Thanks very much. Uh, tune in tonight at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. Peter Martin and I are listening to one of the great records of all time, Oscar Peterson's We Get Requests. It's just fantastic. You are going to feel good. You are going to smile. It's impossible not to listening to that. Right on. Take care, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Colleen. Thanks, Madeline. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Amit. Thanks, Christian. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, Kyle. See you tonight. Later. Yeah, Dave, come on over, man. We're having a good time over there. Thanks, Stephen. Totally, totally, totally right, Kyle. There's that link, everybody. If you didn't check it out before, go check it out. It's a special, special collection of lessons. All right, y'all. Thanks, Rico. I got my red gnome hat on because it's cold in my house right now. Thanks, Yao Ming. Thanks, Steve. All right, Colleen. Thanks very much. We'll see y'all later. See you, everybody.